The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... I'm E.G. Marshall. Most animals live out their lives in the company of other animals of their own species. Wolves live in packs. Lions live in prides. Whales swim in the company of other whales. Now and again, we encounter an animal who is a loner, like the tiger or the panther. But horses seek out other horses, zebras, other zebras. Penguins stay with other penguins and seals with other seals. Man is no different. He chooses to live close to other men, and when he doesn't, he is considered a curiosity. What happens to a human when he is deprived of companionship is the theme of our story. She's at it again, sir. What are you talking about? It's the boy. He's back. You don't mean... I do, sir. But it's been a year. Far as we know. You're sure about this? Positive, sir. The boy is back. Our mystery drama, Child of Fate, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Elspeth Eric and stars Jada Rowland and Anne Williams. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. In a place whose name I cannot tell you, set far back from an unpaved road, behind tall trees, stands an old house made of stone and covered with ivy, wisteria, and silver lace. A lake sparkles at the foot of a soft rising hill. Flowers grow gracefully in careful beds. There are birds and squirrels, chipmunks and raccoons, crickets and frogs. Now and again a young deer ventures to the edge of the wood and peers out. All is calm and reverent and self-contained. you'd wanted to. You think I don't know that? Well, I do. I'm the only one that knows how sweet and kind and considerate you can be. Beneath that rugged breast beats a heart of purest mush. (laughs) Love me, don't you, Gerald? Never mind. I know you do. And I love you. More than anything or anyone. More than life. Let's lie here, very quiet, and let the sun cook us. And the birds will come and peck out your eyes. I'll get the door, Edna. I know who it is. Tarcher? Yes. Mr. James Trent. Yes. Do come in. Thank you. Did you have trouble finding us? A little. (laughs) We're very obscure here. There was no one to ask, apparently. Uh, We have no neighbors nearer than six miles. Oh, do come into the library. Thank you. Oh, what a beautiful room. You like it? Oh, very much. My wife designed it. Well, the whole house, for that matter. She has exquisite taste. She died last year. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Well, she'd been ill for some time. Fifteen years, actually. Ever since Halcyon was born. Your daughter? Yes. What a lovely name. Well, the Halcyon is a bird like the kingfisher. The ancient fable tells us that it nests at sea about the winter solstice, and during its incubation it has the power to calm the waves. Oh, that's charming. From the fable, it came to mean calm, tranquil. Of course. I've heard of halcyon days, meaning a time of peace. Yes, peace. That's what my wife and I were looking for. In our child, in our home. This place belonged to my wife's father and to his father and his father, and so on and so on for eight generations. It covers 500 acres, and no one has ever sold a foot of it. How marvelous to possess so much beauty. Uh, we always found it so. We seldom stirred off the property, any of us. Oh, Mr. Trent, didn't you send your daughter to school? Uh, no. No, we didn't. How old is she now? Fifteen. I've never been to school. We taught her ourselves. Oh, I see. She's not an ignorant girl, Miss Tarcher. She reads a great deal. She's gone through fractions. She has some knowledge of history. Well, I, I didn't mean to suggest... My wife taught her sewing. Uh, Daniel, our gardener, uh, taught her his own kind of botany. She knows her way around a kitchen, thanks to Daniel's wife, who's our cook. I taught her to ride a horse, to swim. Halcyon is far from ignorant. Well, you, uh, you must have worked very hard with her. We did. How old are you, Miss Tarcher? I'm 27. Not too old. No, not too old. Not too old? For what? To be a companion to a 15-year-old girl. But your advertisement said you wanted a governess. That's what I am. What I've been for five years, that's what I'm suited for. Well, I didn't know how to word the advertisement. How do you explain? You said a governess who was fluent in French and Italian. I know that's what I said, and that's what I want. I may take Halcyon abroad in a year or two. Well, then... But more than that, you must have some idea of the life we lead here. We're uh, very reclusive. It's, it's a hermit-like existence, isolated as we are from nearly everyone... The servants have been with us since before Halcyon was born. There's never a new face around here. I'd hope that you... You could supply a certain amount of cheerfulness. Uh, to my daughter, of course. Yes, come in. Mr. Trent. Oh, Daniel, come in, come in. Oh, you're busy, Mr. Trent. I didn't know. Now, come in, Daniel. I want you to meet someone. This is Miss Violet Tarcher. And this is our marvelous gardener who makes... Every lovely thing grow lovelier. How do you do? Miss Tarcher. She's going to come here to live, Daniel. At least, I hope she will. Oh? You think you'll like it here, Miss Tarcher? I, I haven't quite decided. Daniel, will you be good enough to introduce Miss Tarcher to your wife? Uh, ask Edna to show her over the house. Especially the blue room, which will be hers if she decides to stay. Uh, now, Mr. Trent... Well, if you don't mind, while you're doing that, I'll go down to the lake and fetch Halcyon. Mr. Trent, could you wait a minute? I'd like to talk to you. Well, can't it wait, Daniel? It's about Miss Halcyon. Oh. Well, um, take Miss Tarcher to the kitchen, turn her over to Edna and come back here. I'll wait for you. Miss Tarcher all delivered over into Edna's capable hands? Yes, sir. She's shown a lady over the house. Good. You wanted to talk to me about Halcyon? I think I should, sir. Well, what is it? Mr. Trent. She's at it again, sir. What are you talking about? You know what I mean. It's the boy. He's back. Gerald? Isn't that what she used to call him? Yes, sir. Gerald. But it's been a year. Far as we know. You're sure about this? Positive. I was repairing the dam where the brook flows into the lake. You know the spot. And I know. Miss Halcyon was swimming, the way she always does. I don't think she saw me, but the air was so pure and clean I could 
hear her voice as perfect as if she was standing next to me. And she was talking to him. You couldn't be mistaken? She called out to him, loud and clear. She was calling, race you to the raft, and you'll never make it, and things like that. Good Lord. It's been a long time, sir, since she's done that. Did you see her, Gerald? Did you see her drive up in that taxi cab? Did you like her looks? I didn't. I thought she looked like a stick. Oh, you. You like everybody. Absolutely everybody. Well, at least you try to. Why can't you be like me and see right through people the second you set eyes on them? I am like that, you know. Or do you think I'm being conceited again? Well, who cares what you think? As long as you love me. Love me passionately, devotedly, completely, hopelessly. Come on, let's swim back to the pier. Don't you think Miss Tarcher should be told, sir, if she's to stay on here? Well, I don't know that we have to tell her right away, Daniel. Oh, Edna and I don't mind about Gerald, Mr. Trent. We're used to having him around ever since Miss Halcyon was five years old. But a stranger moving in might not understand. Well, she hasn't decided to stay. Not yet. She might be put off. Uh, we're not absolutely positive that Gerald's come back. I'm positive. Or that he'll stay. He might go away. He did before. He might. Well, he might not. Uh, that must be Miss Tarcher. Open the door, Daniel. Yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Trent, what a beautiful, beautiful house. You like it? Like it? I love it. It's taken hold of me like an enchanted place. Oh, Mr. Trent, I should love to stay here. You haven't met Halcyon. That's true. Though I'm sure she's lovely. Any daughter of yours. Daddy, where are you? In the library, Halcyon. Oh, good. It's the most beautiful day and I've had the most marvelous swim. Oh, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. This is Miss Violet Tarcher, Halcyon. You remember I told you? You're here to teach me things, aren't you? French and Italian, if you care to learn. You'll teach me to care. I know you will. Well, I'll try. So will I. We'll do great things, Miss Tarcher. Oh, Mr. Trent, your daughter's gone straight to my heart. I'd love to stay on, if you'll have me. Ask anyone what he wants most in life. After he has given you the glib, the ready answers, answers like fame, success, marriage, or children, after all that, you will discover that beneath and beyond all these desires lies the insatiable craving for peace of mind. We may think that wealth or fame will bring us peace, but the truth is we do not care what brings it if only we can achieve it. The bitter truth may be that such peace comes only in the grave. We'll come back shortly with Act Two. Now... Miss Violet Tarcher has taken up residence at Calumet, an enormous and extremely beautiful estate belonging to Mr. James Trent. She is there to serve as companion to Mr. Trent's daughter, Halcyon, until the previous year, Halcyon had received her education from her parents, but now her mother has died. Mr. Trent is concerned not only for Halcyon's education, but for her social contacts, which, aside from her parents and the servants, have been limited to a creature of her imagination named Gerald. It is six months later. She's quite nice, Gerald. I mean it. You don't like to hear me say that because you love me so utterly. 
Yes, you do. You always have and you always will. So don't bother to deny it. I could tell the biggest lie. Steal the most priceless treasure. Start fires. Ravage the landscape. Seduce all the men in the world. You would still be there for me. Still adore me. Still call me your very own Halcyon. We have such a beautiful relationship, don't we? You're there when I need you, telling me you worship me. And when I don't need you... Oh, there's never a time when I don't need you. And there never will be. Come right in, Daniel. Mr. Trent, do you want to talk to me? Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Daniel... You see quite a bit of Halcyon, don't you? I mean, she's out of doors so much. I only see her at mealtimes, really, but in between... Well, I don't exactly spend much time with her. No, but you must run across her during the day, catch sight of her, know where she is, what she's doing. Well, right now, I happen to know she's in the orchard. She's sitting in the tallest tree, way up the top. Well, what's she doing there? She's been climbing those trees since she was a little girl. Sometimes she takes a book up there to read. How do you think Miss Tarcher's working out, Daniel? Uh, Do you think she's a good companion for Halcyon? I should say so, Mr. Trent. They do everything together. They swim, ride horseback, play tennis, go for walks. Miss Halcyon seems to be doing well in her studies. And I'm not worried about that. What I really wanted to know and... You're the only person I can discuss it with. You understand? I understand, Mr. Trent. You mean Gerald? Yes, I mean Gerald. Do you think she's still... That he's still... That... Well, that she still imagines he's with her? I'd say... Not as often, Mr. Trent. She's not alone so much anymore. What did we do to her, my wife and I? Letting her be alone so much. I don't think you should blame yourself, Mr. Trent. Many children invent companions. I did it myself as a youngster. Well, I don't think I ever did. My childhood companion was a boy my own age. Maybe a little older. Definitely a little taller. And very accomplished. But he never uh, condescended to me. (laughs) <laughs> he thought everything I did was wonderful. He always wanted to play my games. He always wanted to hear what I had to say. Never interrupted. Never cut me off. Never contradicted me. Oh, he was a marvelous companion. I've never met another like him. I called him Tootie. I've never known why. <laughs> well, what happened to Tootie? Why, well, I don't know precisely. He just sort of... Wandered away as I grew up. When I first missed him, missed his company, I thought I'd lost something or someone. But it was something or someone I didn't really need anymore. Hmm. It's a long time since I've thought about Tootie. And you think Gerald will just... Wander away? He might. Then again, how can we know? You're right. Of course you're right. Is that all, Mr. Trent? Uh, Just ask Miss Tarcher to step into the library, will you? When she's finished her breakfast. I think it's time I told her about Gerald. Perhaps she can encourage him. To wander away. As soon as Miss Tarcher has finished breakfast, I'll have a French lesson. Then we'll go for a swim before lunch. So you can have the morning off. Only don't go too far away. Do you understand? I might need you. Dear Gerald. 
darling Gerald. You wanted to talk to me, Mr. Trent. Daniel said... Yes. Thank you, Mr. Archer. Well, nothing's wrong, I hope. No, no, no. Everything's fine. You're enjoying it here? Oh, very much. And I'm enjoying your daughter. Good. I, uh... I wanted to talk to you about her. She's coming along very well with her French. Italian is a little slower. It's difficult to master both at the same time, but she's making progress. If she'd had Latin, it would be easier, I'm but... sure she's doing very well. Oh, she is. But that's not what I wanted to talk to you about. Actually, you seem to have done Halcyon a lot of good, quite aside from the tutoring. Oh, it's very nice to hear that. You, uh, you spend a lot of time with her, don't you, Miss Tarcher? Quite a lot, yes. We do a lot of things together. So she's really not alone very much, is she? Well, I, I don't tag around after her. She's entitled to some privacy. Well, of course, but I... But besides, she seems like a very self-sufficient young lady. Oh, she is, in a way. Uh, Miss Tarcher, would you mind very much if I called you Violet? No, I don't mind. You see, Halcyon's been alone so much, all her life. When she was a very small child, she invented a playmate for herself, a little boy her own age. Someone to talk to, someone to play with. That's not uncommon. I know, I I know that. But when a child grows into adolescence, does she still need this fantasy? Isn't the real world enough for her, or shouldn't it be? Well, I think it should. Well, Daniel thinks, and, and I'm inclined to think, that Halcyon hasn't given up this imaginary playmate. Uh, uh, Gerald, his name is. She's, she's really grown up with Gerald. Or, or should I say, Gerald's grown up with her. I've seen no signs of any aberration, Mr. Trent, if that's what you're trying to ask me. It is. It is. Thank you for reading my thoughts. Halcyon's such a healthy child. Spends so much time out of doors. Daniel says she's in the orchard right now, high up in a tree. All that fresh air and sunshine. Well, how could she have any morbid thoughts? And I hope you're right. I think I'll go get her out of that cherry tree so we can start at lessons. Then we'll go for a swim before lunch. You've made me feel easier about her. Oh, Mr. Trent, she swims so well. How about building a diving board at the end of the pier? Well, I taught her to swim. I I don't know about diving. I could teach her. I'd love to. Good. That settles it. You'll get your diving board. Halcyon? Where are you? Where's here? Top of the big tree. Oh? To your right. Now straight ahead. Now look up. For goodness sake. I can hardly see you. I'm almost at the top. How in the world did you ever get up there? I climbed, naturally. <laughs> well, you certainly must have. This is the best tree for climbing on the whole place. Can you climb, Miss Carter? I used to, but I'm a little too old to do it now. Oh, try. Why don't you try? Well, why don't you climb down so we can start our lessons? Oh, try climbing up first. Want me to show you how? I... I don't think so. See that branch just above your head? Grab hold of that and swing your feet up. Go on, try it. Heavens. Go on, try. That's it. Uh... Oh. Now swing your feet up. Oh, oh I don't know if I... Uh, oh, there. Oh, is that easy? Yes, it really was. It seems I haven't forgotten how after all. Uh, well, um, what do I do now? Grab hold of the trunk. Oh. And now step up uh, on that, that, that big fat oh, branch. Oh, 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 yes, yes. I, I see. Uh, uh, got it. Uh, there you are. Uh, oh, wasn't that easy? Uh, now, come on up the rest of the way. Well, uh, it's it's like working out a puzzle, isn't it? Kind of. Uh, well, I, 
I don't promise to climb to where you are. Oh, you will. It's easy. Oh. Come on. Oh. You're halfway up. <laughs> Oh, now step oh. on that branch. Oh, well, uh, will it hold me? Oh, sure. It... No, oh. no, oh. not that one. Oh, oh. oh I've got you. Oh. Oh. Here, give me your hands. Oh. Your hands. Oh. Oh. I just got hold of your blouse. I, I... I can't oh. reach. shows himself to, to the one he loves best. And he loves me best. But he doesn't love Miss Torture. He hates her. I've tried to tell him she's really very nice, but he just doesn't like her. He's jealous, I think. Darling, don't you think it's about time Gerald... Well, time you gave him up? I can't, Daddy. Because he loves me so. He'd be lost without me. He worships me. Well, I don't think he's good for you, baby. Now, you said it was his fault Miss Tarcher fell out of the tree. Well, he told her to step on the wrong branch. That it was too late. He told her? Or he told me to tell her it's the same thing. Well, then he did a very bad thing, sweetheart. Don't you see? You mustn't listen to Gerald anymore. Uh, Mr. Trapp? Excuse me, sir? Uh, what is it, Daniel? I'm going down to the orchard now, sir. Take a look at that tree. Oh, fine. Good, Daniel. I'll report back to you. Gerald's in that tree. Now, now, Harold. He's up there. Go along, Daniel. I'll join you later. Yes, sir. I'll go now. And you, darling, why don't you go up and see Miss Tarcher? See if there's anything you can do for her. Rotted. Halfway through. No wonder. Why would anyone step on a branch like that? It's all you're doing. You're bad. You're wicked. You're evil. You're an evil thing. You bring pain and hurt. Go back. Go back where you come from. Go back to hell, you wicked boy. We don't need you here. Daniel. Oh, you've corrupted this place. You've put a stain upon it. Daniel. Go away. Get out. Leave us alone. Does he hear you, Daniel? Born of Satan. Child of the devil. Beelzebub's boy. Born of filth and evil. Leave us alone. Go away. Leave us alone. Mr. Trent. Leave this place. You're not wanted here. Go away. Go back where you came from. Mr. Trent. Mr. Trent, listen to me. It's God or devil. Go away from this place. What are you doing, both of you? Violet. You're talking to a boy who doesn't exist. He's somewhere. He's somewhere up there. Are you mad? Are both of you mad? Violet, you don't understand. I do understand. I understand very well. You've let the child's fantasy become your own. You've lived with it so long you're starting to believe it. For a while, so long as he was just hers, this creature of her young imagination, that was one thing. But, but now, now in your bewilderment and your isolation and, and your loneliness, you've let her dream become your dream. Her hallucination has become yours. Please, Violet. Well, so long as this... This Gerald did no harm, you were willing to let him live. Be a playmate to your daughter. Her companion, her cherished friend. But let anything go awry. Let anything disturb your peaceable existence. Threaten the tranquility you built for yourselves. Then you join your innocent daughter in her soul's wanderings. You give this wild playmate reality... And you try to exorcise it? Shame on you. Shame. Shame on both of you. Grown men giving themselves over to delusion, to, to phantoms, to error of the most cancerous kind. Are you here to protect the child from chaos and confusion? 
Or, or have I been sent here to protect you all? It is not a new phenomenon, the feeling of helplessness in the face of evil. It is a feeling as old as man. In man's long history, he has given evil many names. Devil, demon, fiend. All in an attempt to externalize something which we all feel. We all know. But it lives within ourselves. If we really wished to change this wicked world, we would begin by changing ourselves. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Halcyon Trent, daughter of James Trent, has lived all her 15 years at Calumet a secluded estate six miles from the nearest neighbor. Her constant companion from an early age has been a boy named Gerald, an adoring companion and confidant created out of her own imagination and need. Now Miss Violet Tarcher has come to Calumet to serve as governess to Halcyon. Her idyllic stay at the isolated mansion has been shaken by a fall from a high tree a fall which Halcyon insists was precipitated by the boy, Gerald. You were bad, Gerald. Miss Torture could have been killed. Is it because you know I like her? Can't you bear my liking anybody but you? Jealous, Gerald. I can love more than one person, don't you know that? I loved Mummy, I loved Daddy, and I loved Daniel and Edna, and you. You're the only people I ever knew, till Miss Tarcher came to live with us. Now I love her. Yes, 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 I really love her. Oh, don't turn from me, my darling, don't be hurt. I still need you, you know need you terribly to tell my thoughts to, my deep and sacred feelings. Halcyon? Halcyon, where are you? Uh, I, I'm in the boathouse, Miss Tarcher. I, I want to talk to you, Halcyon. You want to come in here? I might as well, I suppose. What's the matter, Miss Tarcher? Halcyon, your father has told me that you believe this friend of yours was the cause of my fall from the tree. Did he tell you that? Yes. And Daniel told me the same thing. Is it true? You mean did I tell them? Or do you mean is it true about Gerald? Halcyon, it is not true about Gerald. Because there is no Gerald. Now, don't turn your face away. Look at me. Yes, Miss Tarcher. You must know that you invented Gerald. Made him up many years ago when you were very little. Made him up on purpose to be a friend to you because you were so lonely. That's not true. Gerald is my friend. Of course he's your friend, but he isn't real. Gerald is my friend. He's 17 and he has long golden hair and beautiful blue eyes. And the longest eyelashes of anybody. He's kind and good and loving and gentle. Except for once in a while, like when he made you step on the wrong branch. And you fell out of the tree, but he only did that because he's jealous of anybody I'm fond of. Because he adores me and he thinks I'm wonderful and he wants to marry me. Halcyon! We weren't going to tell anybody till I was quite grown up. But now you know. <laughs> I've just come from Halcyon. We had quite a talk about Gerald. Well, I don't think anyone has ever talked to Halcyon about Gerald. Well, that's the trouble. Well, we've known about Gerald, of course, since Halcyon was five. Sometimes she'd mention him casually in passing, you know. 
But my wife and I never made anything of it. We we always just accepted Gerald, sort of accepted him into the family. You may have accepted him into the family further than you know. Now, what on earth do you mean by that? Halcyon intends to marry Gerald. How's that? Gerald has blonde hair and blue eyes and gorgeous eyelashes. Did you know that? <laughs> Why, no, I didn't. And as soon as they are quite grown up, they mean to get married. Oh, this torture. Violet, this is really too much. She told me so. Well, I've no doubt she did, but really, when she's a little older, meets a flesh and blood young man... Mr. Trent, Halcyon is already 15 years of age. Girls marry at 16. They don't marry the Geralds of this world, or whatever world this Gerald belongs to. You, you refuse to understand. Your daughter has had this fantasy for 10 years. This phantom boy has grown up with her. You've kept her in such seclusion, such isolation, she's never developed the strength and the independence to recognize her delusion. You've let her go on believing in this boy, born of her spirit, her desires. Yes, born of her loneliness. Don't you see, Mr. Trent? She may never let him go. Never. Well, in due time... Oh, the time is past due. The time is now. And even now may be too late. Miss Archer? I want to talk to you, Daniel, about Miss Halcyon. <sighs> yes, Miss Archer? I just had a most exhausting, a most unfruitful conversation with Mr. Trent. Yes? About Gerald. Oh, the boy. Don't say the boy like that. He isn't a boy. He isn't anything but the product of Halcyon's imagination. Yes, Miss Tarcher. Only he's been around so long, I get used to thinking of him as a boy. But you must stop. And more importantly, Halcyon must stop. Why, Miss Tarcher? You can't stop people believing what they want to believe. Or make them believe what they don't want to believe. Then you won't help me. Well, help you do what? Persuade a young girl that the boy she's loved for ten years and who's loved her is just a made-up thing? <laughs> She'd call me a liar. She'd love him more than ever, and he her. She might tell him they were betrothed and planning to get married. How did you know that? Did she tell you? Hmm? Tell me what? That they were planning to get married. No fooling. Did she say that? She most certainly did. Imagine that. You talk as though you believed in Gerald. As though you thought he really exists. That, that he's a real person. Well, I don't think he's a real person. Not a real person like you and me, but... I don't know if I think he exists or if I don't. He might. And then again, he might not. How's the diving board coming, Daniel? About finished, Mr. Trent. Very handsome. Got a good spring to it. Daddy! Uh, it's Halcyon, Miss Tarcher. Yes, dear? Oh, come on in for a swim with us. Oh, not today. Oh, it's such a lovely day. Maybe later. For now, I'll just watch you two. Can I try out the diving board, Daniel? Go ahead. Come on! The water's wonderful! Your turn, Violet. Very nice. Change your mind, Mr. Trent? I'd rather watch. Race, race you to the raft, Halcyon. Okay. Help. Help. Violet. I'm tortured. I, uh, I'm going down. I can't. Help me. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Let go. Let go. Relax. Something is pulling me down. Just relax. Lie on your back. Something is all... My foot. Pulling me. Oh, it's Gerald. Gerald, let go. Gerald, I command you. Gerald. Let go, Gerald. I'm telling you to let go. Go away. Yes. Gerald, let go. Go away. Gerald. That's it. Now lie on your back, Miss Tarkin. Arch your back. Let go. I'll throw you in. Oh. Are you all right? All right. I think. Gerald's gone, Miss Starcher. 
I know. Everything will be all right now. Are you feeling all right? I'm fine. You're sure? Quite sure. Gerald let go just in time. That wasn't Gerald. It wasn't. You must have been over one of the springs. It did feel cold suddenly. There's seven springs in that lake. I did have kind of a cramp in my leg. I know it wasn't Gerald. There is no Gerald, Miss Torture. No? There never was. Oh. I made him up. Oh. A long time ago, I made him up. When did you decide that you'd made him up? When you spoke to him. In the lake... When you said, let go, Gerald, go away, Gerald. And I knew there wasn't any Gerald. You didn't need him anymore. Not like I used to. Do you think you'll ever need him again? Maybe. When I'm lonely. When I need somebody to talk to. But of course I'll have you, won't I? Me. And other people. Daddy? Maybe soon. Lots of other people. Did your father tell you? He and you and I are going abroad soon. To Paris and Rome and London. Oh, you'll meet lots of people. Lots of boys. Real boys? Real boys, darling. Real boys. <laughs> Daniel, I've come to say goodbye. Have a nice trip, Miss Tarcher. Oh, I'm sure we will. It'll be a great experience for Miss Halcyon. Daniel, did you know she's finally decided there is no Gerald? No real Gerald? I knew she'd wake up to that sometime. Mm, you were right, Daniel. You can't tame anyone's fancy. The harder you try to bring it down, the higher it flies. Have a fine time in Europe, Miss Tarcher. Don't you worry about anything here. We'll take care of everything till you get back. Keep an eye out for Gerald, will you? He's about 17 with long golden hair and blue eyes with long lashes. I'll watch for him, Miss Tarcher. But, uh, I think it's more than likely you'll find him in Europe. information, Violet Tarcher and James Trent were married the following year. As for Halcyon, she became engaged to a young man with blonde hair, blue eyes, and very long lashes. An Englishman, I believe, from London. As for Gerald, for all I know, he's hidden himself in the woods, waiting, still waiting to be called out to play by some young girl. I'll be back shortly. It's hard sometimes to see someone, particularly a young someone, reveling in the delights of a fantasy, a delusion, even an hallucination. But we should be very careful how we set about trying to free them. Probably the best way is to accept their dream as true fact until the moment arrives when it has lived out its usefulness and the dreamer awakes. Our cast included Jada Rowland, Ann Williams, Guy Sorrell, and Ken Harvey. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. 
Until next time, pleasant dreams.